Come on, turn down the volume. <laughs> so I have some special glasses. I can actually see through them. They're my Craftastic Live glasses. I thought they were sort of crowny and sort of um, superhero-ish, and they're red, and they have bling. <laughs> so, yay! Because my crafty sister always put a little something on her head or on her face, so I have to do the same. So, hi, everybody. I'm just always so slap happy to see you. Real diamonds. No, actually, they're cubics. <laughs> um, so I am doing um, a, um, a love song journal. And what I think is really fun is uh, rock ballads have some of the most awesome lyrics. And whenever you're wanting to send a little special something to your loved one, and, you know, the regular poetry, you know, Emily Dickinson, <laughs> uh, it's just a little sappy, right? You know, a little sap fest going on with a lot of love lovey poetry and some of the Hallmark cards, you know, it's like dee 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 da dee 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 da. It's like who writes this crap? So go to your iTunes or to your, you know, C D storage area in your home and look at the lyrics for some of your favorite rock ballads. Look them up on Google. Because they are awesome. I mean, here's the one that I love the most, Aerosmith from I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. And he, he, I could spend my life in the sweet surrender. I could stay lost in this moment forever, where a moment spent with you is a moment I treasure. I mean, even when you read it, like, what's his name from Priceline, you know, reading, <laughs> reading songs. It's awesome lyrics. So I am putting, putting together a um, – I'm going to show you some different techniques for putting together a book, something like this. I'm not doing this exact project. But the idea is to take this little heart-shaped board book, because you know how much I love me some board books and decorate the front and then go inside and put some of your most favorite lyrics from various love songs, specifically rock ballads. So I was doing alphabetically, I had Aerosmith and then I was doing Beatles and then for C I was doing Chicago and then I was going to maybe try, I don't know, Def Leppard, <laughs> um, Eagles, uh, Peter Frampton. So I was going along the alphabet. So here, let's rock on down. Oh my god. Andrea, it's like, it's like living with a roommate with an accent. I'm like using all your lingo now. <laughs> Get out of my head. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to show you uh, some blending, first of all, to get just the most beautiful, romantic, and royal pink. Um, and the way that I do that, because I'm going to paint a, um, a nice blank piece of this, I cut my pages just for the purposes of the demonstration. Um, so I'm starting with my favorite thing, iridescent medium. You guys, it's like a broken record, I know, but it's just so flippin' awesome. So I'm putting a lot of iridescent medium. I am putting the tiniest, tiniest drip of red. And, and I mean like the tiniest little dot. And that's probably even a little too much. But I'm going to use it anyway. And then I'm using a metallic gold. And putting just the tiniest dot of metallic gold, but a little bit more. And then I'm blending. And this is going to give you the most lovely shade of golden, iridescent, rosy, dark pink color. And I just love the way it turns out. It's almost melony. Melony. Is melony in the room? <laughs> it's almost melon-like, and it's just a perfect color. So then what I... I wanted, I'm, I love, if you guys don't have one of these little fingertip tools, it is the awesomest thing. It's a dauber, but it's a wide dauber. Instead of a fingertip dauber, you can put all your fingers in there, and it keeps it um, really from getting messy. So I'm just dabbing, baby, because dabbing is the way to go. Now, there's a couple different things you can do. You can dab, or you can swirl. And I kind of like the swirling action, and you kind of have to work a little on the quick side. The reason I like the swirling is that you can kind of create some textures, and that's the benefit of having the iridescent medium in there, is that it um, retains the brush strokes so that you can actually create sort of a petally kind of texture by just kind of twisting your little dauber around. And you can get these little kind of circular, petally, you know, just random textures that as a background, um, it is a giant bingo dauber. Um, no, these daubers, no, I got this just at my local craft store. Um, it, you know, where the rubber stamps are and the aisles. <laughs> no big daubers at CNT, no. So anyway, so I just, you know, it's just that easy to create a really pretty kind of soft, fluffy, pretty romantic background. So 
putting that aside for a second, this is the other one that I did earlier that is dry, and this one I did by mostly just kind of randomly dabbing. So you can kind of see some of the lines of the dauber a little bit, which I didn't mind too much. And it's hard to see here, but it's really sparkly. Can you see the sparkle now that I got it on the light? So it's just the most beautiful shade of pink. I just am in love with it. So what I wanted to show you here is the idea of doing some stamping. And hold on, I got it. my heat gun is just out of my reach. There we go. So a little stamping with a little embossing powder, because you've got to love the embossing powder. And I highly recommend, if you like stamping, you need to have a nice selection of um, these kinds of stamps with really random patterns on them, because they make the most funnest, funnest backgrounds. This is Hero Arts. Yes, Hero Arts is the name of this stamp. And it's just so much fun because you can just stamp randomly and, and you won't mess anything up. You don't have to, you can create a whole background with, um, with stamps like this that have this sort of really random pattern on it. So I am using my um, Watermark Resist pad, which is a really nice multi-purpose stamp pad. It's great for clear stamping, faux watermarks, and uh, heat embossing. And so bear with me. Okay, I'm going to stop looking at the chat room, people, so don't ask me any questions. Here we go. No longer looking at the chat room for a couple minutes. All right, so getting this nice and nice and gooshy with my clear stamp, and I'm going to give it a nice stamp, and of course you can't see anything until you start. Hold on, i got to get my tray. Until you start. I'm just so incredibly organized, aren't I? So while it's still wet, you want to sprinkle your embossing powder on there over a tray, tap it off, and you get this really great thing. Now before you go to do the melting that's going to um, deliver the, the lovely texture, I'm going to do it again. And if I was working really fast and, try, and, and concentrating, I, I would stamp everything first and sprinkle everything last. So I'm stamping next to where I just stamped so that I don't accidentally rub off any of the powder that I just put on there. So now I'm putting the more powder, tapping it off, and then I'm just going to do the one end of my stamp and just get that corner going, a little, little bit more powder, tap it off. Gorgeous! Look how cute that is. And this powder that I'm using, I love it. It's white. It's by Sukuneko, Sukuneko Embossing Powder. It's really good stuff. So then I think you all know the drill, but I'm going to do it anyway because I love to melt things. And I think everybody knows how to do this, but it just gives it such a cool, glossy texture. I'm just going to do a little bit because it really does brighten up the white. Heat it up, baby. It's a little bit stinky. So anyway, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it really does get this nice, glossy, white texture. And what a great background. So then what I would do is I would put, I would take a piece of vellum paper, print it out on my computer, and this is the words to that Aerosmith song I was just telling you about, and, and, uh, be, and have the parchment, or not parchment, have it be the vellum paper so that you can still see a little of the background, and then just position it wherever you want to, and maybe work with a slightly smaller font so that you don't cover as much of your background, but just kind of let it float right there on the page. And you can do that for each page and just create these really fun backgrounds. And another thing that's really fun, I'm not going to demo this on camera because I need to be over a sink, but um, I used a pretty font, and then I just used a regular match, um, and I just lit it and burned it. Remember doing this in Girl Scout camp? Didn't we burn paper like this? And what's really cool about the vellum, I don't know if you can see it, but it burns the brown, and then just inside the brown is a bright white um, that the heat creates. So you get this sort of double layer. You don't really see it. Oh, I love Dana Carvey's chopping broccoli. I'm chopping broccoli. <laughs> Candace, that's hilarious. So anyway, so that's one idea. And then I also wanted to show you, um, you can also do really fun stenciling. And um, your dauber is really great for um, stenciling with a darker color on top. And that's the great thing about blending paint, is you start kind of light. And then in order to create this contrasting color, I would just add a little red to it. 
uh, Jen, what was the stamp pad? Oh, this one, it's, um, it's by Ink Essentials. It's by Ranger, Watermark Resist. And it comes with a reinker, or you can get reinkers so that it'll last for forever and ever and always. So that's a fun background, again, that you can make and then put your little lyrics right on there that you print out from your computer. You can also just create a little template for yourself with pretty paper. And you can, um, I love taking the vellum paper. I love, love, love using uh, translucent paper and, and use alcohol inks to create uh, uh, some fun little marble texture to create little accents. And of course, lastly, Andrew's in the room, so I gotta go. Um, the other thing that I think is an adorable, adorable way to use paper in this heart shape is to cut these teardrops out with contrasting paper and lay them like that and do like a little half heart, half and half. Isn't that cute? So as you go along, you just get this great little book and, um, oh, the smudge technique too. Hold on, Andrea. Look, I did the smudge technique like you did with a really fun rose colored stamp pad. I used this square one. And you get, you get the geometric and the smudge at the same time. It's awesome. Okay, so Andrea's in the room. I'm coming out. Um, bye. I'll be back for Friday.